Heroes. We've been talking about heroes. I've come to believe that we really do have heroes that are among us. They have done the necessary things to set them apart from others and can be classified as heroes. See, for them, it started with our first characteristic that we looked at, and that was obedience. Doing the small things, step by step, they were obedient to those who were in authority over them, and it prepared them to be in the right spot at the right time. Well, it also boils down to having a heart. Like David had a heart after God. David was willing to do the things that God needed him to do because of his heart. Our focus today is justice. And I've got a character that I believe fills that role. Now, this character, when introduced in the 1960s, was just a single pane, in other words, a single box in a comic book. And she was put there to be the love interest of Captain America. She wasn't named. She wasn't identified. Nothing about her stood out other than that one picture. But from that one picture, she became very integral to the whole Marvel Universe. We'll talk about that in just a second. But there's some backstory to Peggy Carter that I think is really interesting. When she was in school, um, I would think this would have been, well, uh, in high school, she had a little um, side of her that would get herself into trouble, but earned respect of her peers. She had snuck into the headmaster's home, stole his wife's underwear, and uh, also a bottle of his liquor. So she did get caught, but she was the hero amongst her peers. But education became part of what drew people's respect for her. She worked her way all the way up to a PhD. Now this is, you know, this is during World War II. Women are not expected to rise. They have a glass ceiling. But yet, she continued to do what her passion was. And with her PhD, she got a job during World War II to become a code breaker. She was recognized. She she was seen as a person that could be trusted, and because of that, she was given more and more and more responsibilities. In fact, she became part of the, the resistance and went behind the scenes because she knew that with her uh, being a woman, that she would not be considered to be a spy. A another story, I think this is my, my favorite scene ever of Peggy Carter. Now, she was part of the team that was looking for uh, to find a soldier that could become Captain America. So the scene shows her strolling in on, on an army base, and there are the soldiers all lined up. And one soldier began to wink at her and to demean her. And, uh, and so she called everybody to attention, and she had him step forward and she said now make sure you put your right foot forward and she stepped on it and she punched him in the face and he fell down shortly after the commander of the base uh, saw what had happened and walked up to the group and says i see that you've now been introduced you know to to peggy and, and so he was standing up for her authority over people Interestingly enough, for the Marvel Universe, she became what was the head of S.H.I.E.L.D., which was an international agency that was designed to protect the world. And from her, she was the one that helped develop all of the rest of the heroes. The ones that we see, you know, uh, like the Hulk and uh, Iron Man and, and these others that, that were lifted up. She was the one that helped to develop them and encourage them and support them in their roles. So our 
biblical character is so much like Peggy in that there was no glass ceiling for Deborah. And the reason why I say that is because this is a time when the country was ruled by, um, by men. Women were, were, were just to be seen, not heard. But there's a section in Deuteronomy, I think that's important to, to lay a foundation for this, is that Moses is saying, this is in chapter 16, Moses is saying that judges need to be agreed upon, voted on by the members of the community. They are to seek justice and only justice, that they were to, uh, to be of high regard. They were to be respected. They were to be beyond reproach. And so we begin to see that Deborah, in the book of Judges, was respected. Now, it could be that she was a prophet, or it was, we know that she was a prophet, but because of her prophecy, and prophecy doing well, in other words, what she said God was saying was coming true. And so because she was being respected for that, I could see the community gather saying, we need a judge. She is doing such a great job. Let's make her the judge for us. And so people across all of Israel would go to what was called the Palm of Deborah. And that's where she sat and was up on top of a hill. And this was a time when the Israelites were on the process of turning back to God. They had sinned. God had let another country take over. And so now Deborah was going to be their prophet and their judge. And so they came to her repenting. They came to her letting her know of what they had done wrong. And she was now their judge. And she was going to provide justice for them. And it came time that God said, okay, we got to raise up an army to defeat the Canaanites. And so Deborah called upon uh, Barak to be this person. He didn't want to go into battle without her. She was so well respected and so well trusted that even this man who had all this authority over 10,000 soldiers wouldn't move forward unless Deborah would be a co-leader and walk with them and to be part of them. And so she provided cover for the entire military as they went into battle. I find interesting that so often we as a society have put different groups of people down, people of color, people that um, may not be intellectually as high as others. You know, ladies and, and, and women have been put in their place for so long they had a role to play. But that's what I love about the Bible. What I love about God, what I love about being a Christian, is that we elevate everyone. We bring them onto a level plane. And so every day, normal people can be lifted up if they're willing to obey, if they're willing to have a heart, if they're willing to have justice for those who are around them. And so I believe that, again, this is uh, my, my phrase that I've said for so long across uh, my adult life. Every day, normal people who do extraordinary things will get extraordinary results. Deborah was extra, she was normal, but extraordinary in that she was willing to speak for God. She was then willing to be the judge. And because she was willing to do all those things, she was also now known as a warrior as well. So think about what God is preparing you to do. 
or maybe you're already in the midst of it. But I believe that you, like Deborah, can be a person that can stand up for others and give justice. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, there are so many around us that are downtrodden, that they, they need to have someone speak for them. Let us be the people who can speak for others, for those who, who society looks down on. Let us be your spokesperson. Let us begin to bring justice for these people. And if it means that we have to put on a warrior's cloak, well, then so be it. We'll be obedient in that because we have a heart for you and a heart for those that are around us. We put all of this into your holy name. Amen. One more. We'll see you next time.